good morning and welcome to cloudy and overcast Winnipeg not much of a sunrise this morning <clears throat> there was something but uh, since then it's clouded over now where the sunrise camera used to be looking it's now looking at the birdhouse can, can you see it there Well, I can always dub it in, can't I? Now, yesterday I was out in the backyard and uh, my neighbor was sitting on his deck and he was saying that, he says, you know, you've got uh, birds moving into your birdhouse. So I swung the camera around and it's been watching now for the last, uh, oh, almost 24 hours, I guess. And yes, we've got renters. <laughs> And every once in a while you see a little bird coming with some moss and moss and all that kind of stuff and uh, I guess uh, they're making themselves a little nest. I'll uh, you know try and uh, right now I've got the ca the camera set so that whenever there's motion on the perch it lets me know you know when I view it later. So that you don't have to sit there and watch a whole bunch of video even though it does go I can speed it up to eight times normal speed but it still takes a long time you know like if you were to watch a 24-hour happenings uh, it would it would uh, take uh, three hours so uh, yeah who wants to sit there watching video for three hours anyway uh, <clears throat> I'm starting to ramble here I'm starting to lose my train of thought I guess oh we got a rollback I guess I could have possibly have done uh, an extra last night, uh, but I didn't. So we're going to have a bit of a rollback. Remember I was telling you I was going to talk about the e-bike. So that's, that's what it's all about. And what I'm going to do at the beginning of it, I'm going to let you know where you can scrub ahead to get to the end of it. Because some people could care less about the e-bike. They want to see what am I doing here about the model. And I, I can understand that. So, yeah. Uh, because it is pretty long. I think so. I, th I think I ramble on for about 10 minutes. But the only interesting thing is that I, I actually crack the throttle and get the back wheel spinning and you can see the speedometer. <laughs> At least in, in its lowest gear. Now, let's not talk about the e-bike anymore. I'll give, or that'll be giving it away. Nobody's going to want to watch it because I've said everything. Anyway, what I do want to do today is I, I was having difficulty painting this yesterday with the brush when it was on the rotator like this. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take this little piece and, uh, well, first let's get it out of here. I, I should really be recomposing for this, shouldn't I? Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to release it. Grab grab hold of it here. Maybe what I should do is release it this way. That way I'm not going to be putting any stress on that connection where the uh, where the uh, spotlight is fastened onto that pole that sticks up. And uh, what I want to try to do now is, is just touch it up with a the, with the brush. There's a lot of places I noticed afterwards when I was editing out the video that, <clears throat> that I missed. I, th I thought I got everything, but, but I missed a lot of places. So uh, uh, I probably will do that quickly off camera so that we can move on here. Uh, also, I, I want to paint the railing on the top of this <clears throat> this part right here. I want to paint this railing uh, with the 66. Uh, it's already been sprayed, so you might say it's kind of like uh, uh, primer in a way. That I think that whatever I want to paint onto it now is going to stick really easy. And and that's about all I have to do on this. And then of course there are the the uh, the guns the gun sight or, or the, the fire director control things that go in in, in these tubs. I, I don't think it's guns. No, it's not guns. It's uh, and then is it, don't we have to put some spotlights somewhere? Oh no, that was another piece that we were doing the spotlights. Um, anyway, let's uh, get going here today and uh, and uh, see what we can do. And in the meantime, let's let's have our, our rollback. Okay, 
Let me get myself comfortable here and we'll talk about this. <laughs> and this guy thinks he's going to be riding a bike. Okay, I got two major problems. If I have the seat the way it's supposed to go at its lowest position, which is about like this, so that the hydraulic shock part of it will work, it is, it is too high for me to get myself up onto, at least right now, until, until I get more used to it, okay? So if I, if I put it all the way down, I, I can't get it to tighten up because it's just not designed to do that. I'd have to rig up a different kind of post. Uh, okay, I don't want to do that. Um, secondly, I can't pedal it, no matter, no, no matter what. I don't think I can pedal it. Now, if I had the seat way up so that I could extend my legs on one leg at least completely, I might be able to get the other leg up on the high pedal. But right now, I can't. I can get, I can get my foot on the low pedal, you know, when, when, when the pedal's right down, no problem. But uh, uh, the, the way I get onto it is I can't throw my leg over it. The seat is a little bit too high to sort of get myself over that way. If I take the seat right out, well, well then I can. Okay. I can get over it from the back this way now, sort of straddling along it. I just have to be careful or it could get very painful very fast. Uh, okay, but, but uh, then, then what do I do? Put the seat back in afterwards? No. So what I do is I lay the bike on its side and I stand, I sort of straddle this part right here and that actually works pretty good. Then I, I pull it up and um, I got to do a little bit of practicing with that because right now there's a lot of stuff here in the kitchen that I can sort of hang on to when I'm doing that. But what if I get out, you know, on, on the road somewhere and have to stop and for, in, for whatever reason I have to get off the bike? Uh, there might be nothing to hold on to. Now I was entertaining the idea of uh, maybe having sort of some sort of a clip that I could have my cane on the side and then I could sort of balance myself, you know? Uh, <laughs> This is getting crazier and crazier. Okay, now you think that's crazy. The latest is I have ordered from Amazon a bicycle crank puller. It's sort of like a it's sort of like a, a pulley puller, only it's designed to remove the cranks uh, from the bicycle. Now the, here's the plan. I can get my my one foot on on the low side, no problem. But I can't bend my knee and leg enough. To get it on the high side, uh, on this other side here that you can't see. I mean, it's it's like way way up here in the in the air, and I just I just can't bend my leg that much. So uh, <clears throat> I've ordered a, a, a crank puller, and the plan is to pull one of these cranks, either either one, probably the one on the other side that you can't see, but we'll show you this one. Pull it and turn it 180 degrees so that they're both down. Now, <laughs> I know that's not the way it's supposed to go, but you know, they're supposed to go like this, not like this. Although, mind you, I, I have actually seen uh, somebody, you might say, I was going to say pedaling, but he was, had a, it, it was sort of a, a like a handicap uh, bicycle, tri or tricycle, and, and that's how they were working it, like this. Now, I've I don't think I can take all of this mechanism off of here because then it, it wouldn't be a, an e-bike anymore. It would be a motorcycle. And I think the, I think the, uh, qua the uh, I was going to say qualifications, but the uh, classification would change. And I wouldn't be able to ride it on a bike path because it, I'd have to ride it on the road. Uh, <laughs> however, if both pedals are down, then I have places to put both feet because they're both down 
and uh, I can't pedal it anyway, so what's the difference? And uh, it seems to have a lot of power. Oh, I, I should mention two things. This, this, this particular bike is extremely well made. And the welds and everything are, are, are beautiful, beautiful welding. It's probably done by a robot. And anyway, it's, uh, uh, all, all the welds are, and, and, and everything is, is, is really strong. Uh, I didn't weigh it yet, but it's probably, I'm guessing it's about 65 pounds or so. Uh, I, maybe if I get around to it, I'll weigh it. Um, but what's the difference? Uh, everything was uh, pretty much put together out in, in you know once I took it out of the box I just had to fold it out and and the packaging was was absolutely excellent I, I've never seen anything packaged as well as as this was it was just wrapped up all over the place uh, you know with that strong styrofoam spongy stuff on on the on the ends and uh, the, I had to put the pedals on uh, I had to put the pedals on. I think that was it. Uh, this, uh, this, this folds down. Okay, the idea is that this is supposed to fold down, and then there's a hinge here. So you take it, you take it and unhinge it, and it sort of folds together like this, and it becomes only half as long as it is now. And the idea being is that you're supposed to be able to put it in the back of your car. I, I won't be doing that. I, I, I will probably never unhinge this because I, I just not going to have a need to. Very well made. Uh, however, the, the manual that came with it, you know, if you think uh, trumpeters manuals are sometimes not too clear, well this has got places that are not too clear. The, uh, for instance, the uh, speed controller, it's sort of like, it's sort of like programming an electronic watch. You know, you got to know how to do it or you're not going to get what you want. But right now I've got it so it's in miles per hour. <laughs> when it came, it was in kilometers per hour. But I, I started messing around with it, now it's doing mi miles per hour. Uh, but it, the main thing I want to know is what level of, of torque am I at? It goes from one to five. And, uh, well, maybe when we get it outside in the, in the daylight, well, I'll be able to demonstrate it. It, it has a, uh, a, a, a split grip, okay? This part won't turn, but make sure it's not on. But this part will. And I'm, I'm guessing it, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not a, what you would call proportional, but it sort of goes in... Uh, you might call it segments or, or something like that there. I'm guessing it's divided from 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 full from off to full on by about 20 segments and you can sort of hear it as you're accelerating it. Uh, well maybe I can do that for you. Yeah, oh, you want to see the you want to see the back wheel turn all by itself? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll recompose. Now I gotta get over to shut the camera off. That's the problem with a small kitchen. <laughs> okay, the uh, kickstand, you can't see it. It's on the other side of this back wheel here. But if I lean the bike this way, it lifts the back wheel off the floor. Otherwise, it's gonna take off on me. Um, okay, it's got a key under here somewhere. Got to turn it on. Where is that key? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we turn the key on. All right. Now we should be able to get the by pressing the power button. Okay. And we are at uh, zero miles per hour, and we are at level zero. So we're going to want to get it into level one. That's the the weakest mode, the slowest mode. That'll be good enough. And uh, I'm going to stand up here, and the throttle is right here. We'll just go, th we'll just slowly go through the uh, uh, the speeds, and I will call it out to you because you probably can't read that from way back there. Okay.
Okay, that looks like about uh, three miles per hour. Three point five. Five point five. Okay, that that's it for level one. It's uh, 16 miles per hour. Uh, I think that's about all I can show you in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm not going to show you me trying to get myself onto it. It'd be really nice if I could just, you know, throw my leg over the seat, but, but those days are gone. So, uh, okay. <laughs> See you back at the model table. Okay, so I positioned my camera and everything here just now so that you can't see the clock. And I look up in my monitor and there's my watch. Unintentionally. I just can't win. I didn't want you to know how late it was. Now, the plan is I'm going to use my rubber-tipped tweezers here. I should make up more of these because right now I could use two pair. So what I want to do is very carefully here, if I can, just sort of grab a hold of the the end of it and hold it by the spotlight and uh, I guess maybe I should maybe kind of angle it a little bit so that it's going to be at 90 degrees to the okay now I always have a trouble of not squeezing tight enough so this time let's squeeze tight enough okay that should that should work. Okay. Now, I'm going to paint this by hand. I probably won't be able to do it on camera because that was my problem before. Uh, now, actually, come to think of it, that railing is going to be the other way up. So let's just take this out. Turn it around. Put it like this. And that way I'll be able to see what photo etch is go that's going to actually be visible from from the viewer, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I think this is probably going to work okay. Uh, and I'll be able to get that spot right on the bottom where where the uh, the the other uh, oh my goodness tweezer self locking tweezer was was uh, grabbing onto it. And, uh, okay, let's, let, let's stop flapping my lips here and wondering why it is I can't remember the names of anything anymore. <laughs> well, I do, know, I do know how to press record, so I guess that's the main thing, right? Okay, let's press stop. Okay, I have decided to uh, not video this uh, on, on camera because I want to be able to concentrate and hold the part this way and that way and and uh, concentrate on not breaking it off of the spotlight so uh, we'll take a look at it after I'm done okay I got them they're probably 99 percent dry I did uh, use the heat gun there because I was holding them with my with my fingers I found that <laughs> what was happening is uh, the the first one the uh, the rubber some, somehow was sticking to the uh, to the part, and, I, and it didn't even want to come apart. And I was afraid it was going to actually pull the photo etch piece off of the off of the spotlight, but it, it didn't. But I had to repaint there. It was it, it was it was black. Yeah, the rubber came off. That was kind of strange. Okay, so I'm going to use a different brush here. I was having a problem with that other brush. It was also sort of splaying out. And I don't know why. I'm hoping I'm not going to have that problem with this one because this is this is my best small brush. So um, we won't put on the macro lens. We'll just move in a little bit here, and and we'll put on a different pair of glasses. I think we should be in focus there. And drop my chair down so I can just get right in here. And let's try not to make a mess. Now, the idea is we don't want to be getting this 
66 down onto the 19. I'm just going to basically do this side. You know, there's not much of a difference. I'm wondering if I should be painting this to 77. There's actually very little difference here. Now you can't see anything happening probably from your perspective because you're looking at the other side. Now I just want to go partially down the post but not, not all the way. And I'm not even going to try and paint the bottom rail. You know, I can sort of see a difference. I'm going to have to basically flood it on, I guess. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn it around 180 degrees and, and do the other side. Now, don't touch that part. Don't touch that part. We just want to sort of give it the illusion that it's a little darker than everything else. Maybe I can just turn it around here. Okay, hopefully you can see that there is a slight difference. Is it better with my... Is something light behind it or not? Probably not. Okay. Um, yeah. Probably about half an hour ago or less I painted our little railing here. And the... Uh, the spot that I've grabbed onto is going to have to be touched up, but I'm noticing that maybe there's other places too that have to be touched up. Either that or... No, it, it's actually it's pretty good. Okay. Now hopefully this railing did not bend out of shape because if you remember we had it just about dead on. You know what? I'm going to have to take and, and twist this whole thing on its back sort of. I'd forgotten that we were going to let gravity be our friend so just, just let me recompose here. Okay we are leaning back about 45 degrees maybe not quite. And the idea is, well, what is the idea? What we want to glue it down. It, it's it's actually just perfect the way it is. Don't need to be poking at it. So I've got some CA thin here, and I want to try and just touch it. There. I actually saw it go wicking along. Now can we do the same on the other side? Kind of trimly. See, I'll steady myself a little bit differently, maybe. There, I got it there as well. Now, if that would cure like that, it would. It would. It wouldn't fall out of there. Now, maybe on the sides. Now this means that I'm going to probably have to do a little bit of painting. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. 
I can see where the CA is dissolving the 19 uh, on this side especially maybe your angle doesn't show it but the 19 is dissolving you, know, you can probably see it over here now if I if I don't catch this with anything um, and don't poke at it it's it's probably going to be okay now those those uh, railings that had the spotlights on them they, they go on the other side just right here so I think what I'm going to do is just turn everything around as long as we're set up like this and put it on okay very gently now whoops now I want the the side that has the photo etch piece facing out and that's this one right here I'm trying to grab it in such a way that when I release it it's not going to stick to the tweezer now this is actually the first time I'm trying to position this. Let, let me move you in just a little bit here. Okay, check the monitor. Can you see what's going on? You know what? I, I think this is a, a job for the macro lens. Yeah, I'm going to stick the macro lens on. We almost had it though, didn't we? Very gently. Okay, and let's try this again. I had to grab it just a little bit differently. Uh, we want to set it on the on the ledge. Can't let go of it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Tamiya tape and I'm going to put it along the edge there, maybe just maybe just a, a little bit of the ledge, not, not the whole thing. Okay, probably now what's happened is I got my tweezers. How come I can't get my fingers in there? I must have this at the wrong angle. Try it like this, maybe. Okay. Now that doesn't have to be on there real hard, does it? Okay, now I should be able to hook the, the railing. Where did it go? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'll set something down and then I'll realize afterwards that, oh no, I set something on top of it because I forgot where I'd set it. Okay. I'm going to try and get this angled just in behind there. Alright. Now if I can carefully come in from the other side and push it up against the tape and it won't fall off because it the tape is there unless I push it right over and maybe maybe it's about as close this way as it can come whoops oh maybe I'm gonna have to block a block your vision there now you know that that could be that that's just about it. I uh, I can't seem to get it to come this way anymore, and yet it, it looks like it should. Where's the? Hold her down, or there we go. Now if we could move it about half a millimeter to the right, and maybe I'll do that by pushing. Right there. All right. 
I think that's about as good as I can get it. Now, where's our CA thin? Try this again. Maybe if I bring my applicator at a different angle here. You notice how the, the blob of CA glue is not on the end of the applicator. It, it's more on the side of it. Okay, we got that one. we got that one. Okay, we'll just let that cure for a moment. Um, or, or can I maybe go up the sides here? There, it's starting to go. It doesn't have to go very much. There we go. Okay, it's welded on. It's not going to fall off once that cures. Okay, this is just a little bit of curing agent. I'm going to just touch it on the top of the splinter rail and let it wick its way down. And just touch it on the on the by the tape there and let it. Oh, you could actually see it wicking. <laughs> okay. It's, I'm, I could probably take the tape off now, but I'm going to wait a minute or two. Okay, I'm guessing about two or three minutes has passed here. Now, should I try and put a little bit of CA thin along the bottom rail there? Or am I maybe going to just court disaster here? Um, oh, I know what I was going to do this afternoon. I was going to check the sensor on my camera. I think I got a couple of little spots of dust on it. Seem to be, oh yeah, it came off. Okay, that that would be, but you know there there is a bit of a gap right here, but I don't think I should try to fill that. Although that would really help to make it a lot stronger. But I think it sort of messed things up. And if I'm careful when I'm painting this lens, <laughs> um, okay. I think we'll just leave that. I'm going to, I'm going to do the other side pretty much the same way. Okay, so when I got this camera, I think it must be going on uh oh, a year and a half ago, I think I first got it. I set it so that when I power it off, like to change the lens, the the protective cover that covers the sensor is 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 closed and you can't actually see the sensor. I just few moments ago set it so that when I remove the lens we should be able to actually see the sensor so yeah and there it is now for sure you're not going to want to touch that with your finger and nor normally you can't see that because there is what looks like a focal plane shutter goes across there and uh, I have probably had this change lenses I'm guessing well over a thousand times since I have got this camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my 
air thingy here and I'm just going to blow up onto it. See, if if it's dust, I should be able to blow it off. If it's something sticky, I may not. And then we have a bit of a, a, a problem going on here. Um, I have actually swabbed a sensor that had some little oil spots on it, but not on this camera. And it, I, it, I was quite successful at it. And I got them off and it was all back to brand new again. I believe it was on the uh, D800 that I had and the they had a bit of a, a problem going on in that let's see now I, I want to make sure you can see what I'm going to do this this is the way I do it I, I hold the camera with the with the sensor facing down and then I'm be, being very careful now not to poke up into the thing Hopefully that got it. These these cameras do have a uh, a, uh, a, a, a a system for cleaning the sensor, but I don't think it works too well. <laughs> okay, let's get our lens back on here, and uh... okay. Now it's protected again. All right, we'll see if I can notice any difference. I'll, I'll actually test. I'll, I'll find it so, something that's a little bit bland and just slowly move the camera around. And if the spots stay on the, you know, in place on the sensor, then well, anyway, you don't need to know about all that. You're getting more information than you need to know here. Okay, I am not seeing those little spots now that we saw before. However, what I am seeing is the fact that this uh, video is a lot longer than I thought it was. I think we're up to about 37 minutes already here. So I'm going to call her quits for today. Thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.